We're going to make this using ShaderRef HDRP. So start by creating a sphere in your scene and placing it in front of what you want to distort. So I'll move it up, scale it up a little bit, and put it in front of this crate here. And that's good. Now we're going to create a shader. So go to Shader Graph, HDRP, and just start with a lit shader, call it distortion shader or something. And open it up. Start by bringing in a noise texture. There's one in the description. And what we're going to want to do is basically scroll this texture by manipulating its UV. So to start, get a tile and offset node. And what we're going to want to do is get our time, multiply it by our speed that we want. And then we're going to make a vector, a vector two out of that, and then plug that into the offset portion of the tiling and offset node. Just like this. So connect that up. And now notice that it scrolls. I can change the multiplication speed so it's a little bit slower. And there you go. We have our scrolling texture. We'll save it. We'll hook this up to our base color so we can see what it's doing. Just a preview. So save it. We'll go over to our scene, right click, do create material, and we'll automatically create a material out of the shader called distortion mat or something, distortion material, and apply that to our sphere. You'll see that it works. Here's our scrolling texture. Now go back to our shader graph. And we're going to want to get the scene color. Basically, we're going to want to get what the screen looks like. So get the screen position. And we're going to plug that into a scene color node. And here it is like this. And now we're going to want to plug that into a multiplication node, multiply by exposure. This is important if you're using HDRP, not as much if you're using URP. Now plug that into our base color, save that, go over to our scene again, and go into our material, make it into transparent. And then you'll see how it's working, except for it's lit a little bit strange. So go back to our shader graph, change the lit to unlit, save it again, go back to our scene, and there we go. It's working perfectly. Move it around, it's rendering what's behind it. So now we're gonna actually want to offset the screen UVs for the actual distortion effect. So let's group this up so that it's a little bit cleaner looking. So we'll move this around just so everything looks all right. All right, that's looking cleaner. Now, just to show you what this looks like, here's a preview node to see the actual texture I'm going to be distorting with, so the little pearl and noise. Now, we're going to want to basically add that to this screen UV. Before we do that, we want to multiply it so it's not as strong. So multiply it by something like this, something really small, and plug that in. Oh, we'll move this a little bit so it's a little cleaner first. There we go. And now plug that into the add node, so it's adding to the screen UVs. Just like that. You can't really see it. But if you go back, and maybe we'll make this a little bit larger, you can tell it's there. It does that basically. It's gonna be distorting, offsetting the UVs, but that'll be too much. So we'll go down to 0.05. All right, and now that's basically the entire shader. So let's just quickly clean everything up. Move this all together. We'll do this one bundle here for the actual scrolling of the distortion texture. And this area is gonna be um, offsetting the UVs of the screen, the screen UVs. And we'll smooth these out of the way a little bit. Uh, and this final most important part is to connect these new offset UVs to the scene color. Let's do that right now, just like this. And then we'll save the asset. Now go to your scene, and it should be all working. I have a sphere distorting that was behind it. Um, one other thing that we can do is add a parameter, a property. So we'll drag this out to make a float. We'll add it to the group. What we want to do is right click it and then do convert to property. And then we'll have an actual property. We can rename it to something like distortion strength because this will be controlling how much it distorts by. Move it a little bit so it'll look cleaner. Save it and you can see it in our material. We can change it, edit it to edit the distortion strength. Now, just for a quick example, if you bypass this exposure setting and we look at it, it looks fine. But if you go to your volume settings and change your exposure, you'll notice that the lighting for it starts to go a little bit weird. And that's the reason why we want to multiply by exposure. And that's the effect. Thanks for watching.